It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. Uh, it is a perfect Sunday afternoon, and in the Steel City, those are reserved for one thing, football, as our coverage of the NFL brings us to Atrisher Stadium in Pittsburgh. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North, as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here in the Steel City, I'm Brandon Gordon, joined by my partner, Charles Davis. And Charles, it doesn't matter what year it is, who the players are that are wearing the black and gold, it is never an easy assignment to come in and win here in Pittsburgh on this field. And this team always takes on the identity of this city. They're gonna be tough physically, but they're also gonna be tough mentally. Just three head coaches in 54 years. They've established their program. They know who they are. Good luck coming in and trying to take one from the Steelers. Meanwhile, for the Browns, they come off a 7-10 season a year ago. Not great, but not a total loss either. And you think there are building blocks in place. They are there. Look at what they did last year. Their pass defense was number five in the league. Their rushing attack, sixth best in the league. They have players. They have a system. They just need to put it all together. The kicker, Dustin Hopkins, set to get this one going. And with the terrible towels waving wildly, we are underway from Pittsburgh. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. Pickett didn't quite lead Pittsburgh to the promised land in his first season as the hometown kid and franchise quarterback, but he did impress once he got on the field. Winning seven games helped keep the vaunted streak of non-losing seasons alive in the Steel City. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Pickett back to throw. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. And just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. Third and short, so didn't need much, but got a little extra on the backside. Nice run. Shoot up the yardage, didn't he? To me, that was offensive line with leverage, good blocking angles, taking on a stacked defensive front. And once they chopped that little hole in the beginning, he took it and rambled. And just the third play from scrimmage, wanted to avoid the three and out and did just that. First down, and they go back to Harris. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Second and 10. Pickett. Completes this one to Pickens. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 39. 14 yards that time for number 14. So a first and 10 upcoming from Browns territory now at the 39-yard line. Harris running straight ahead. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Second and five. They run again with Harris. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. And hold on here, because 
Evans on that last run. It looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Trying with Pickett here on third down. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Oh, a pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Boswell's kick is good, and the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. Even though they didn't find the end zone, they have to be pretty pleased with how they moved the ball on the ground because we know that that was one of their big goals in this game. And that really goes through the entire offense because when you're running the ball effectively, just about everyone's involved. It's not just the guy carrying the football. It's everyone blocking for him, both inside and on the perimeter. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And the Cleveland offense ready to go to work behind the three-time Pro Bowler Deshaun Watson in his second season now as a Brown, number seven overall. Just six games played for Watson in his debut season with the Browns, which really limited how much he could step into the franchise quarterback role for the team. But he gets a full slate to do so this season. Remember, his last year in Houston, over 4,800 yards. They expect excellence from him. Watson's throw complete there to Moore. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Four yards on the Second and six, just inside the 30. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson, nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. And a defensive-minded coach loves to turn up the heat, turns it up there, it pays off. And back in the good old days, those defensive-minded coaches just talked about intimidating teams, using force, right, beating them to the punch. In this case, they're talking about creating turnovers. That's all they preach all game long, all practice long, every meeting. Get the football. That's what they want. Following the fumble recovery, pick it. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, they certainly knew their challenge as this series began, and they got a stop on play number one. Goal now, get two more stops and limit the damage to a field goal. Here's second and 10. Pick it'll look to throw it here. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. He don't want to throw away this excellent field position, but that's two incomplete passes in a row. Definitely need something big here on third and 10. Conversely, defense has done a good job on first and second down. The coverage has been draped. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Okoronko had a breakthrough when the Texans moved him from linebacker to the defensive line last season. Had a career high five sacks. The Browns gave him a three-year deal to try and unlock another level from him. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This officially a 55-yard attempt, and this one is no good. He missed it, and that will keep this a three-point game. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. You've got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. 
They fumbled the last time they had the football. Fortunate that it only led to a field goal. 3-0 the score as they start first and 10. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. Watson on first down. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he's brought down. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Now the NFL's third leading rusher last year. It's Nick Chubb. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. T.J. Watt, always a disruptor. There to blow that play up. Well, let's face it, that's just a helpless feeling for a running back there. He's looking up to find a hole, and all he finds is a whole lot of ticked-off linebacker. Back to throw, Watson. And a Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Montrevious Adams breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's got to have a bit of nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. The back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Harris. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. From the 25, here's second and four. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. A short one there to Fryerview. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. They hand this off to Harris, and he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Wusu koromoa Big impact play, a tackle for loss. Sometimes it's a danger putting that jumbo set out there. You just get a lot of bodies massed in one location. You can wind up with 18, 20, maybe even all 22 in the box, and there's nowhere to run the football. Again, it's Harris on second down. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. Pick it now from the gun here. And they'll get him down two yards shy after a pickup of eight. Fourth and two. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect them to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. And he'll find 
get some space up to about the 25. It's a seven yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Chubb producing on that run, and he produces year after year for the Browns. Third in the league with over 1,500 yards in 2022. He quietly is in the top 20 all-time in both yards and touchdowns in a player's first five seasons. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. Well, he was looking at a dime formation, six defensive backs on the field. So he's looking for anyone, anyone to throw the football to, but he didn't have anyone open, so he took off and ran for it, but he came up just short, and that brings up fourth down. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 14-yard line. Harris will start the drive out. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. This is second and eight. Now pick it. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. There is no denying they want to get him involved. That's already the fifth time that they've looked his way in this first quarter. So that tells me defensively, that they want to insist on going in that direction, make sure you've got your best people in the area to try and take that away. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be corralled well on field right around the 40-yard line. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. To the air on first down with Pickett. On oh, the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There was a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw had no shot. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. <laughs> Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And that's going to be knocked away and in 
complete. And with it, time has expired on the first quarter. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This is taken at about the 14. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. For the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. From the 21, here's second down and eight. Now Watson. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Now it's Watson. He's got the connection to Moore. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Second down and a little more than a yard here. They go up the middle with Chubb. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Here's a second and eight. Coming right, this is Chubb on the toss. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Here's Watson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they've certainly gotten him involved in this first half. And on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And Chubb will try the middle here. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. The defense has been on the field a long time now, and after a run like that, they've got to feel like they're almost on roller skates and getting pushed backwards on just about every snap. From the 32-yard line now, here's second and three. They run it again with Chubb. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 49 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been a running game for the most part that's powered him down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. And that's caught by the tight end, Bryant. And that's good for a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. 
six-yard pickup brings up second and four. To throw is Watson. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Here's Watson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Chubb is into the end zone for Brown's touchdown. For as good as Nick Chubb is in the open field, he's every bit as good when they line him up down near the goal line. He's a speed back between the 20s, but a power back down close, and he forces his way into the end zone. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 15. Here's Pickett. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. On the give, this is Harris. And from the 15, they're able to work this up to the 20 for a pickup of a handful. The Steelers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and five. Looking to throw. Pick it. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far, offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. He'll take it at the 42, 35 yards that time on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. The offense trots back out there. Let's turn our focus now to Nick Chubb. The Omen's effort on that last drive. Seven carries, got the touchdown as well. And the O-line probably got a little extra oxygen on the sideline in between. And deservedly so, because they were also calling for him to continue to get the ball, because there's a rhythm that gets established, right? When you're running it well, and the, and the back's getting the ball, and he's in sync and reading blocks, and the offensive line wants to continue to pound away. Haven't met an offensive lineman yet that likes to pass block more than he likes to run block. And that last drive, we saw the, the end result, didn't we? Yep, and all were rewarded with a trip to pay dirt. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more.
They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Here's Corey Bajorquez now. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Greg Newsom up to make the stop. From the 22, here's second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he can muster only a couple here to the 24. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Back to throw, Pickett. The throw left side, hauled in by Pickens. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. Call it a gain of a yard. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now Nick Chubb and the Browns get set for their next possession. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Here's second and five now from the 37. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. Now second and five. Watson. They set up the screen to Chubb. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Hey, baby, this ain't good enough for us. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Watson now to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Holding offense. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. That's on the Pro Bowl guard, Joel Batonio. Second down, here's Chubb again. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A tough spot here, third and 15. Chubb will get the call, running left. And not a whole lot doing there, so he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Corey Bajorquez now to punt this one away. Oh. 
Here's Austin. Call that a 46-yard punt with a net of 40 on the six-yard return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out as we eat closer and closer to intermission. Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. But I've certainly hit the point of no return in this one because that was absolutely the last time they could afford a sack. You got to sustain your blocks and keep your quarterback clean for as long as it takes in this situation. They failed up front this time to do so. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They run with Harris. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Audis Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. No return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Watson, he's going to drop this one down for Chubb. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Brings up second and two. Two yards to go, second down. Looking to throw. Watson, this short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. On first down, Watson. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this will stay a four-point game. One of the few things that hasn't gone right in this first half. They had a chance there for late points, but this one winds up off the mark. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. One second, all that remains. Final play of the first half. Here's Pickett. And that is incomplete. 
So we've reached intermission here in a low scoring game. 7 3 is our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome everyone to our Creative Village studios in the EA Sports halftime report. We saw a solid first half out of the workhorse, Nick Chubb. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. are going to get the second half kickoff and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway this fielded right at the goal line and up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 the Browns offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter and they got the lead CD what do you think the message was at halftime I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Back to throw. Watson, this short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he'll take this from 147-yard line to the other. A gain of six. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Second down and four. Operating from the gun, Watson. And he's got his receiver, Cooper. Cooper, 47 yards. And the Browns come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Hopkins with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Taking it about the one. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They make their second half debut here, and things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that can make this a three-possession game. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. This is Harris. A little juke. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Pickett back to throw. 
That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. Well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll get this up past the 45 and the 47. 58 yards rushing for him now to this point. This second and four. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. Harris has it over the middle. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Pick it to throw on first down. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And from the 34, here's second and four. Harris running straight ahead. And a good looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18 yard line. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. A nice carry by Harris who had tougher sledding than in his Pro Bowl rookie season but still topped 1,000 yards as a Steeler sophomore. As Pittsburgh tries to climb back to the top of the AFC North, he remains a player that their offense relies on. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Here now, second and four. They'll run again with Harris. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. That solid gainer will put them on the doorstep of the end zone. More importantly, it gives them a fresh set of downs. Nice work right there. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Pickett going to bootleg it. And that one too wide and incomplete. And down here, first and goal, if it's not there, don't force it. You've got at least two, if not three more shots at it. So that's a wise move to get rid of it. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Now Harris. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Partner's been my experience that after two stops like that near the goal line, defense has only become bolder. They don't back off at all. I think they continue to bring pressure and force them to make a really big play against them. And the incompletion, then the run for no gain. Let's see now. Pick it now, third and goal. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up, and that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. Boswell's kick is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to six now. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter, look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. Yeah. 
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And able to get this out to the 25. Amari Cooper and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. A well-executed 22-yard game. Hey, did you have one of those backyards that you had one of those, like, mats or pits like you have for high jumpers and you know you had your friends throw the ball and you tried to make the spectacular catches i didn't need a mat <laughs> you, you just did it with the ground absolutely that explains your concrete toughness. that <laughs> explains your toughness right there because i think that guy was raised just like you what a catch and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second down and seven. Chubb on the counter. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. 81 yards rushing now for Chubb and a first down as well. Well, that last run for a first down, it really shouldn't be the last straw for the defense. I don't care how many they've had in the box. They need to add more people. On first and 10, Watson. Targeting more, and he's got him on the crossing pattern. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Now a first down throw, Watson. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Now it's Watson. Look at right sideline, that's complete. Touchdown! Donovan Peoples-Jones, 27 yards. And the Browns go up by two touchdowns. All drives that result in points hurt a defense, but when they are the sustained variety, play after play, and they just can't get off the field and stop them, that can be demoralizing. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21 to 6. That time, a six play drive, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. Pick it. And 
quickly into the hands of Robinson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. They hand this off to Harris. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in... He's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Now pick it. He gets this one to Johnson. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. The picket finding Johnson there. First down, Steelers. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Now a give, running left is Harris, down inside the 40. And they'll come up second and seven. Now here's another carry for Harris. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no gain. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it. You're exactly right. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. A well, third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, is it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Out of the gun, Watson. Able to get away, but he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Alex Highsmith. Gets him for a loss of 10 yards from his linebacker spot. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. Following that sack, Watson and the Browns backed up for a third and long. They'll drop to throw. And the pressure gets to him again. 
DeMarvin Leal fighting through to bring him down that time. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. Now Austin. And just a net of 31 here, 40-yard punt, nine on the return. And now out come the Steelers. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. To the air on first down with Pickett. Looking for Pickens. He's got him on the out route. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the 29, here's second down and two. A give to Harris. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Pick it back to the air on second down. A throw left side caught by the tight end, Fryermuth. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Pick it'll look to throw it here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 47. Dialing up another pass here, Pickett. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Here's Pickett. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. It's J.O.K. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa in there for the sack. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. The Steelers send out their punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. 
Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. And on the stop, Demonte Casey. Second down, eight to go from the 28. And now we've got flags down. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Here's Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? On first down, they'll run with Chubb. There's the stiff arm. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. And again, it's Chubb. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if you picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to be second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees, and the offensive guys. Touchdown, Browns! Deshaun Watson on target to David Njoku. And the Browns have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, it seemed like they were so focused elsewhere, they forgot about the tight end spot, and he's the one that burns them there to make this a three-score game here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. I think there might be a little bit of defensive fatigue from those guys on that side of the ball, partner, because they've been spending their time trying to stop them from all angles. This time, the tight end gets them. Extra point good by Hopkins. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Looking to throw, pick it. That's complete to his tight end, Fryermuth. 
And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Here's second and 10. Pick it back to throw. And this one is incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw, pick it. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, so a lot of credit to the defensive game plan and especially the execution. Pick it, fourth down, desperation time. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So pick it in trouble, and down he goes. Well, Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. Smith with his Darius Smith type of a play, and he still looks like a Pro Bowl player. Even coming off serious offseason injury and switching teams last season, he had double-digit sacks for the third time in four seasons. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now pick it. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked off by Grant Delpit. And the Browns are going to get the ball back on the turnover as they hold on fourth down. Well, you think about it, though, that interception, great for his stats, but bad for field position. It was fourth down. Yeah, terrific observation. If there is going to be a silver lining, and this is what he'll plead when it comes time to watch it again, Hey, it was just like a punt, right? So we ended up taking possession of the ball. But you're exactly right about it. Should have slapped it down. Field position would be better for his offense. But how many times do you get a chance to make an interception that you turn it down? That's when your instinct kicks in and you take the football. In this case, a better decision would have been to knock the ball down. Alex Highsmith there on the tackle. Second and eight coming from the 19. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chubb. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. 
brought down at the 23-yard line. A gain of four, and it's third down. This offense so far on third down, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and four. Here's Watson. And that is incomplete. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. A short one there to Fryermuth. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Eight yards on the pickup. Brings up second and two. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. Now a second and two. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, CD, that helps the home team as they try to erase this deficit, give them the penalty for pass interference on the defense. Yeah, and they certainly haven't been happy with what they've seen so far, have they? They're certainly hoping that that call now might get the fans back into this one. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll make it second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Pickett's throw into the hands of Pickens. And down inside the 15 he goes. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to... And that ball is caught by Washington. Touchdown, Steelers. From 13 yards out. And the Steelers are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. You got it figured out by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Here's Pickett. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. So they go with a pass, and it works there on the two-point try. Charles, just in general, what are your thoughts passing versus running on two-point conversion? Situational? It is situational, and you have to know your team. What is your strength? Because so many people think you have to throw the ball on a two-point conversion, but the stats will tell you that running it is about as proficient. So know your team and go to your strength. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. 
We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down and six. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. And he will have a Browns first down. It has been a struggle, but it's looking like that'll be the one to seal a victory. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Down to an egos Watson, and that should just about do it for this ball game. Well, this was a very close ball game at half.